Captain and Tangela too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to ya! Creature features! And all creatures! shown this bloody picture before. Long ago. But still, though. It's been almost four years. It will be new to most of them. All right. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. The Baron of recycled movie films to my right would be my valiant valet, the valorious Mr. Livingston. And over to this side is the lovely young lady who purrs like a kitten, yet who hisses like a monitor lizard in defense of the last morsels of its carry-on, my vibrant and devious housemate, the tiny Miss Tangela. And have we a particularly fascinating program in store for you tonight. First off, we shall screen The Beast from Haunted Cave from 1959. This is a snowy movie with a good deal of skiing. I myself do not ski. My skills reside in having perfected an exemplary face plant in the snow technique. The upside of which being that I follow up these performances with a large mug of brandy in the ski lodge surrounded by charming ski bunnies infatuated with has-been rock stars. I've always believed you fall over intentionally. Like you would know, Mr. Perfect Form Ski Pro. Did you know that he actually wipes down the lift seat prior to boarding, which greatly irritates the lift operator, as well as the unfortunate riders who are delayed behind him? If you do not wish to study the proper technique I offer, then perhaps you might prefer a lesson or two from Miss Tangella. Tangella? You must be mad. She's still only using one ski. Perhaps when she improves and makes her way up to two, I might consider it. Oh, of course, that's a grand idea. Next time we find ourselves at Lake Tahoe, I shall rent a snowmobile and run circles around you as we descend the Black Diamond Slope. What does Black Diamond mean? Oh, never mind. Joining us for tonight's film will be local book and oddity proprietor Ross Lockhart. He's recently had a grand opening in Petaluma, California for his shop titled Word Horde Emporium of the Weird and Fantastic. He'll tell us all about the wonderful items at his shop, opine about the world of horror and sci-fi, and chime in about tonight's film. So don't go away, for it is to be another night of snowy curiosity shop fright right here on Creature Features. That's beautiful. Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. This brief moment of tranquility has been brought to you by Nightscape. Relax and sleep better every single night with this and other videos from our free YouTube channel. Learn more by visiting nightscape.co today. Welcome to Creature Features. It's that time of the week. You know, it's my favorite. I think it's Ross's favorite. Maybe not. I don't know. We're going to find out. But I hope it's your favorite time of the week because it's uh, Creature Feature Night. We've got a great movie. Maybe. We have a wonderful guest, for sure. 
And uh, maybe a good movie. I don't know. It's been a long time. You know, I've seen this film mm -hmm. and I don't remember it. I, I remember it was like about snow and skiing and a monster. Yeah. Right? I, I think that's pretty much sums it up. And of course, you've seen it. Yeah. So you know everything about the film. So he's going <laughs> to fill in the parts that I don't know about. Because, you know, once I see them, then I'll know. But then they soon, you know, my head is like the small memory chip on a computer. You know, it can it can compute things very quickly, but as soon as you pull the power, it's all gone. Hmm. Anyways, uh, Ross, you do Word Hoard. Yes. What is that? Well, we started as a publishing company. Right. Uh, in 2013, we started publishing weird fiction, which is fantasy, science fiction, horror, but uh, the kind of thing that... That's all we yeah. have. Yes. Exactly. And it's like a boutique publisher. Boutique right. publisher, absolutely. Right. Right. And we've gotten some degree of attention out of it. We've had a couple of award winners and a couple oh, of things wonderful. that have gotten some real good attention. And uh, this past year, we decided to just jump and open up a bookstore with our stuff and a bunch oh, of other fabulous. small presses. And, and hopefully we're going to show stuff. some footage and some, some shots yeah. of this. But uh, So how long have you been into the whole publishing thing? Since 2013, we've been running right. Word Horde. Uh, I worked for about five years for a publisher out of San Francisco. That's before a long that. time. That's a bit. I bet you're good at your trade. That's arguable, but and, uh, and you've hoarded all the words. You know, it. if if I run out of words tonight, I shall ask you for some because I know you've hoarded a few. Let, let me check my pockets. No, oh, words are like it's like it's like money. You can always print more, right? That's true. No, if we run out of words, we can make up some new ones. I've made up a few words. I'm going to run them past the during the break. All right. Well, what do you say we start this film and then uh, when we come back, we're going to chat about what it is exactly that you do. Sounds good. Right. All right. Off we go to the beast from Haunted Cave 1959. It's worth staying up for. So don't change the channel, please. Martini and rented the olive. That was terrific. Just terrific. It feels just like you're flying and you can keep on going forever. What a perfectly delightful idea. Sounds still ready? Still. Are you uh, ready for the Olympics yet? Gypsy, you really ought to try it. It's a brand new feeling. You mean I missed one? Had enough for today? Yes, Gil. I'm expecting Mr. Smith and Mr. Jones. They've been out seeing the sights. I hope the sights are tied down. Well, Mr. Jones and Mr. Smith want to take a lesson today? Yes, I think they'll, they'll probably be wanting to take one all night. Well, I doubt that. There's a cougar on a rampage in this area. I don't think I'd be frightened with you around. Mr. Jackson looks as though he could take care of anything, doesn't he, Alex? Happiness Lodge. Your place is well named, Gil. Thanks. I like it. Mighty hard place to get to, though. I like that, too. I bet you are hard to get to. Hello, Gil. Hi, boss. Have a good time? Good enough, boss. Boy, this place is great. 
We went through a barn full of horses, and we took Polaroid pictures of people skiing and fishing. <laughs> oh, yeah, and uh, we found a mine. Gypsy and I are going back to the lodge. I think it might be a good idea for you two to stay up here and let Mr. Jackson show you the ropes. <laughs> well, he'll need one to hold him up. They'd better learn if we're going to make that cross-country run tomorrow. Drop by the lodge later. I'd like to take a look at those pictures. Right, boss. Let's go, Gypsy. What are you trying to do? Make that yokel suspicious? Did I see something wrong, my sweet? Someday I'm going to shut that pretty little mouth of yours for good. Promises. Nothing but promises. Oh, give me a home where the weightlifters roam, where the rough and the rugged ones play. some more of the mine area. What's the vault like? A cracker box with an iron door. <laughs> Fine. Well, boys, I think we got a classic going here. Marty, tonight you're going to go up and plant the charges in the mine, right? Right out. Tomorrow morning at 8.30, Gypsy is going to take the cowboy up on the ski lift to get him out of the way. At 9 o'clock, the mine blows. Everybody runs to see the disaster. It'll look big. Then we move into the administration building, make the heist, grab the ski lift, and meet the other two at the top for the trip. Simple. Simple as you, my boy. So then we wait at Jackson's cabin till Tasser shows with the plane, right? Right. for supplies. Marty? I'd like you to reconsider taking this cross-country run. It's two days to the cabin. If anything happens, we're out of luck. Well, don't worry. If Byron breaks a leg, we can always shoot him. <laughs> Hi, Jackson. Did you get that cougar? Well, not yet, Miss Burlett. I I'll see you later. Won't you have a drink with us? Mr. Jackson has to get things ready for the trip tomorrow. We'd like to leave between 8 and 8.30. Is that all right, Gil? That's fine. I'll see you later. Do people like that really exist? Not for you, Charles. Not for me, Charles, because I'm with you, Sam. You said it, Jane. <laughs> All the happy little people enjoying their freedom. Dosey do and round we go. What kind of freedom is that? They're all tied down to their petty little futures. Might be nice to have a future, even a petty little one. What's bugging you, Charles? Don't you like the setup anymore? Anymore has been a long time. What's wrong? Nothing's changed. Maybe I have, Charles. What's with your friends? They're spending. Scotch on the rocks, three bourbons with branches, one daiquiri and two gin fizzes. Hi, Gil. Hi, Natalie. I feel like a little dance. Just 
to stay put, Charles. Cowboy. Out of yourself. Where's Natalie? She was here a minute ago. Come on, nature boy. I want to dance. What goes on behind that big, silent face of yours? Nothing clever enough to interest you, I'm afraid. Well, we don't have to be clever all the time. I can talk about the important things, like uh, nature. What do you think of nature, Gil? I guess it's pretty natural. <laughs> do you have a girl? Two or three. Well, I don't think that's enough. Guests of the show stay at Hotel E on Courthouse Square in Santa Rosa. Welcome back to the show. You are watching Creature Features if you've just stumbled upon us. You know, that happens. Oh, People oh, are yeah. like, what in God's name is this? And, you know, it's like, a, it's like a train wreck. You cannot turn your face away. You have to <laughs> remain there. No, I think that's how we got all our viewers. Because nobody would say, oh, I'm going to watch Creature Features. No, they're, they're switching stations and they come across us. Anyways, uh, we are Creature Features. We show movies and have wonderful guests. And the wonderful movie we have tonight is The Beast from Haunted Cave. And the wonderful guest is Ross Lockhart from Word Horde. Yeah, I have trouble saying that. I want to say something else. Well, no, I'm not going to say it though. <laughs> and uh, anyways, uh, Beast from Haunted Cave. So nothing has happened of note in this film. Except I know this is play a piano and it makes me a bit perturbed because I know somewhere in the world there's a piano man out of work because of this mechanized beast. Yes? Do yes. you agree? Mm. No. No, no. No more play a pianos. I, I think I think all pianos should be operated by an actual human or a primate of some type. Oh, I like right? that. Right? No, no. I, I, I've yet to meet a primate who can play a piano. Although, you know, Tangela can play the pipe organ a bit. Well, that's Although good. she's 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 a higher primate, mm. right? Higher than me. All right. Anyways, uh, Ross, yes. how did you get into the whole publishing 
business? I mean, don't you have to be licensed or trained to do this? Yeah, well, you'd be surprised. Um, there's, there's a lot of people that say, oh, hey, I'm going to publish a book, and they just go out and do it. Self-publishing. Yep, there right. is a lot of that, uh, for better and for worse. And that's a rocky road, I imagine. It, it can be. Right. Uh, in my experience, um, I, uh, I got my master's degree from San Francisco State, and instead of going into teaching, I knew a couple of guys that were publishing uh, mostly horror books that uh, were down in San Francisco. So wait, you plan to be a teacher? At one point. Oh, that's wonderful. And then you didn't, and you got into horror, which I love. Well, I think I was always a horror fan. Right. But uh, yeah, um, didn't really want to get involved in the politics of no, education. But you, you, <laughs> uh, that's a smart move, but I think you brought two skills together. You brought your teaching and educational skills into your horror skills and created something new. Oh, absolutely. Right, right. How wonderful. So your friends are doing this as well, you said? Yeah, and uh, they were publishing stuff. Uh, they'd been around for uh, five, seven years at that point. Uh, right. And they were, well, they needed somebody to actually do the work that they couldn't do. Oh. And so I started showing up uh, uh, basically to, to get free books at first. And oh, nice. uh, stuck around until they gave me a job and a title. And... Uh, then their company kind of fell apart, and, and it was time uh, for you to spread your me wings. To say, well, let's see if we can do this. And open your own. That mm -hmm. makes complete sense. All right. Well, we're going to take a look at one of your books when we come back. But first, we've got to get back to The Beast from Haunted Cave. This film does get better, right? It, uh, yeah, kind of. Kind of. All right. No more play a piano, I hope. No. No? All right. Off we go. Back to The Beast from Haunted Cave. We will see you on the other side of the break. <laughs> hey, what's that in there? Part of the broken boot mine. Oh, yeah? Let's go take a look. Nothing to see this time of night. Hide kind of spooky in the dark. And they spin this big cat around. Hmm? Well, this, uh, baby will take care of any little, uh, pussy cats. How come you pack a gun? Well, Gil Jackson told me about the cougar. Well, take a look. Come on. What are you gonna do now? I've never seen a gold mine before. I want to take a look. Come on. You wait here a minute. Ball down there? Uh 
that pretty blonde woman your wife? Well, she's my boss's uh, secretary. Oh, I get it. She sure can do her share of drinking. You sure can do your share of talking. Set the charges. At nine o'clock. What's bugging you? You killed that good-looking chick. What chick? Natalie. You mean the girl that works in the bar? You took that girl. I saw this thing and I saw this egg right down in the shaft where I planted the charge. Alex, are you going to blow up that mine tomorrow? At nine o'clock. That means that you and Nature Boy will be at the top of the ski lift at 8.30. You're going to blow up that mine, kill all of those people. Alex, you're nothing but a mass murderer. Go. Tomorrow's Sunday, nobody works. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories.
Welcome back to the show. Mr. Lockhart had to step away for a moment. I think he had to check in with his staff at the store. Perhaps. No, they're, they're probably open all night long because that's a, you know an important thing to be open all night long, right? I don't know. Don't look at me like that. Anyways, uh, we figured we'd do some letters because you guys send us letters and if we don't read them, that would be completely rude. Would it not? Yes. She agrees. What's with this Santa girl? Oh, she's cold. You know, for, for somebody who runs around like she does, it's surprising when she's actually cold in this manner. It is a rather cold year, though, right? It's a little different this year? Quite. What do you got? Something from Kansas. Something from Kansas. The band? Kansas? No. From Carry the on the wayward son. The state. The state of Kansas. It says, thank you. I like this. It's a thank you card. You could have just said a thank you card from Kansas. But that's fine. Very nice card that says, may you all have a happy new year. Thank you. We probably should have read this one about a month ago, right? It's all right. No, it's all right. Let's find out who sent it. There's a letter, which will make it all better. All right. This is from Stephanie Sukup. We know Stephanie, but we know her husband, Mr. Sukup. We do. They write to us frequently. I like it. Happy New Year to the Creature Feature family. I wanted to send you a thank you card and tell you how grateful I am for all the happiness and joy you bring us. Will you bring us more, madam? It is a weekly ritual to see what new horror masterpiece you will come up with for Saturday. My husband, Alan, and I watch your antics weekly as our date night and always have a great time. You know, we are saving a marriage. That's what we're doing here. We're saving a marriage. One it's, would hope. One, one would hope. No, we, we, that we actually do good, not evil here. Alan is obsessed with your show and has seen every episode. His birthday is in January, and if you would give him a happy birthday shout-out, that would make his whole year, probably several years, and make me the best wife ever. Well, I think we're a little bit late on this, aren't we? We probably missed his birthday. Happy belated birthday, Alan Sukup. And yes, your wife is the best one ever. Thank you for another year of fun and frivolity and for all of you and your crew do each week. May you all have the happiest new year. Sincerely, Stephanie Sukup. Well, thank you for the kind note, Stephanie, and the wonderful card. You know, this looks like it was made in the 70s. And I, you know, I like that decade. They made better cards back then, don't you think? I don't quite remember. Uh, I thought you were going to say for a moment there, I don't think. You would like that, wouldn't you? Yes. No, you can think all you want. It's the talking part that Pacifica, gets me California. Pacifica. I know Pacifica. Do you know what's unique about Pacifica? It's on the Pacific. He's starting to get my 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 jokes here. Unfortunately. I'm going to have to come up with something new, am I not? I think what? you've told that one before. She's looking at me like I'm not funny. She knows I'm funny. Yeah, none of you have heard her giggle before. It's actually, it's, it's like listening it, to a baby giggle, is it not? It's quite frightening, No, 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 it, it will make you laugh. If you ever heard, were to hear, hear her giggle, it's like hearing a baby giggle. All right, this is from Paul from Pacifica, and he says, Dear Creature Fitcher Gang, I thought the Polter Mansion could use some fine art. The thought's there, but there's a slight insult in there, is there not? Okay. Well, you don't like the blue lady? Or our slogan sign? No, yeah, he, he's right. We do need some more art. All we've got is this old stuffy stuff. There's it's more art here than any Oil museum. on canvas. All right, I enclose Great Monster Makes Wave Off Kanagawa, an American ape at Mount Fuji, both definitely not by Master Hokosai. Does Tangela like them? Let's find out. So this is the King Kong one. Oh, I like this. This is very nice. Look. Look at this. No, you, you must hold it and gaze upon it. All right, that's one. And this one is the other. Oh, yes, Godzilla. And it looks like he's got a beach ball, but I think that's supposed to be the sun. I could be wrong. You know, I bet Ross knows all about these things. We're going to have to ask him. All right, he goes on. Uh, so does Tangela like them? Yes, she does. Uh, as for films to run, have you tried to get the Dunwich Horror? I bet it's public domain by now. We enjoy your show. Happy New Year, Paul from Pacifica. The Dunwich Horror. I, I know Dunwich. 
Do you? No, I had lunch. I had lunch with a, a fellow rock star in Dunwich at one time. I think we had sandwiches in Dunwich. Can you believe that? Are you we banned were from there? We were soon done with our sandwiches. Uh -huh. Clever. You know, he's getting there. It's taking too long, from though. Margaret. This would be Your an email. Course. Because there's no envelope. Uh, this is from Margaret. And she goes, hello, Vincent Livingston and Tangela. Newish fan and first time emailer, my dad, EJ, celebrated his 62nd birthday on December 19th. And if you all did a belated shout out, I know it would make his whole year. All right, EJ, happy birthday. You're only 62. He's a lot younger than you, is he not? Perhaps. He doesn't like jokes about his age. Uh, let's see. He looks forward to Creature Features every week and has made it a family affair. We love joining you all in the mansion, but none of us more than him. Thank you for the frights and fan, no, frights and fun, and thanks for sharing these cinematic gems with us. Happy holidays, happy new year. Well, you know, Tangela, give Mr. EJ a wave. That's a birthday wave. You make it two hands, birthday wave. There we go. Perfect. All right. You know, we've got the best viewers in the world. Do we not? No. Indeed. They sent us the nicest letters. It's, it's, it's amazing. The last one. Trevor from Cincinnati, Ohio. He goes, hey, Vince, stop talking and shut up. The sound of your voice makes me want to shove ice picks into my ears. Trevor in Cincinnati. Well, all right. Thanks, Trevor. Maybe and that's not, it. Maybe not all of them. Anyways, if you'd like to send us an email of your own, use the address you see appearing over by my shoe here. If you'd like to send something to the post, send it to the address you see appearing under my knee. We'll be right back with Mr. Ross Lockhart. But first, let's get back to the Beast from Haunted Cave. You certainly look bright and shiny this morning. Are you expecting maybe a hangover? Well, certainly not a girl from a soap commercial. Good morning. Is it that time already? You were the one that said eight. I must have been out of my mind. I just checked on Marty and Byron. They're still out. Look, why don't you two go on up to the ski lift? The boys and I will have breakfast and join you later. No last chance to talk you out of this? What are the state police doing way up here? Oh, Natalie, the cocktail waitress, took off last night. Hasn't been seen since. Oh, I see. Well, look, why don't you two get started and we'll join you in about half an hour, okay? Okay, we'll be there. Shall we all? Mary Whitney! Where do you get to the top? starting.
Wow! Look at all that gold. Hey, can we take more than six? Do it, please. That's all we can handle. Well, what do you think of me? What do you mean? Well, this is the first time you've seen me sober, isn't it? I'm paid to teach people how to ski, not to think about them. I'm always making scenes like that one last night. Don't you ever make scenes, Gil? I try not to. Well, you don't have to. You can go away to your cabin and burrow in the snow. So people have all the luck. I think you make your own luck. I know you're wrong. Your luck makes you. I was your lucky once, and look what it did. Got a cigarette? You talk like a faded woman regretting a misspent life. Well. to be alone. Things about the same for you as they were ten years ago, right? Pretty much. Ten years ago, I was, uh, 16. Ten million years ago. You must have done a lot. I've done everything. So I have my whole life ahead of me. And yours is all used up. Not quite. How comes the rest of mine on that chair list? <laughs> Let's go. Hail, hail, the gang's all here. Are you sure you know what you're in for? This cross-country ski run is something I've been dreaming about ever since I was a little kid. When will you have a little kid, Charles? Everybody stick close and follow my lead. Okay, Gil. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, Gil. Okay. Okay. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com.
out, Ross. Who does your hair? Uh, me and the dog. You? Oh. Your dog <laughs> knows, knows like the hair thing. No, yeah, no, just kind of. Could I get his card? Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, introduce her to her wonderful. sometime. Welcome back to the show. You have reached Creature Features. Thank you for calling. And uh, we are watching The Beast from Haunted Cave with our friend Ross Lockhart, who uh, is the publisher extraordinaire of Word Horde. And you brought one of your books. Yeah. And I was just admiring the cover. It's a Ouija board. Yes, and it's all stories that are inspired by Ouija boards and other divination devices. So it is Ouija. Ouija. Not Ouija. Well, I think you can get away with it, but... Uh, well, no, I've heard so many people say Ouija, mm -hmm. but I see no I or E at the end. Mm -hmm. So I think we're both right and they're wrong. Anyways, this book is about Ouija boards. Yes. It is. Yes. It's it's all about Ouija boards. Yes, and show it's got me, a fully me, functional Ouija board on the cover. Does it come with a little planchette? Uh, not at this point. That would be nice. You know, that would be a nice gimmick. <laughs> you know, you could, you can make it like one of your cards. Yeah. It'd be like a card, but it'd be planchette shape oh i like comes. that yes and then have them punch a hole in the middle so you can right you know i went to the wrong business i should have been into marketing oh i love this you know it's got a nice size print i can almost read without my glasses but i do have to put my glasses on <laughs> are you at that age yet? oh you, yes you are all right yeah i don't feel so bad then you know somebody said i should get surgery but you know i figure it's okay because by wearing these i look a small percentage smarter. I, I think right. so. So this is a compilation of stories. This is like Tales from the Crypt. Yeah. But in book portable form. Yep. Right? And uh, the, these were all written by different people, different yeah, authors. Yeah, different authors. A couple local to the area, but uh, folks from all over the place. Now, this is wonderful. You know, I was, I was mentioning during the break that these are the kind of books I like because I can read a story or two before bed. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, not become engrossed and be up till 3 a.m. Oh, absolutely. Right. There's, this is wonderful. So these are available at your store. And you, we should probably mention your website now. What's the website called? Wordhorde.com will get you to us. Wordhorde.com. Mm -hmm. And you can order these things online. Absolutely. You can learn about the store, how to get there and all that. Mm -hmm. How wonderful. When did this one come out? Uh, a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago. How wonderful. All right. Well, what do you say we get back to this film? The Beast from Haunted Cave. It's not as interesting as this book, but I think we do have to progress a bit forward. And uh, when we come back, uh, we're going to talk about another book, right? Sounds good. All right, off we go to The Beast from Haunted Cave, 1959. Wow. <laughs> here for tonight. Wow! Go to places we're gonna find. I've never been so tired in all my life. Not me. I feel wonderful. Well, I got just a thing to fix you up. Yeah, what? We need firewood. Stop. <laughs> What's wrong with you? We're being followed. What? I've been feeling it on the back of my neck all day. You need a haircut. Hey, you're getting pretty useless. <laughs> Don't laugh, Byron. That old tingling has saved many a trapper and prospector. Huh? Here's to be a old tingling from an old prospector. What about that wood? Well, I'll tell you, if I can get up here, the spirit's willing. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, stay put. I'll uh, be back in a few minutes. And while I'm gone, you can start packing down the snow. What's hitting you? Hey, you gotta forget that girl. I'm not thinking about her. Or what are you thinking about? The thing that got her. Now, it saw me and it means to get me. And that's what's been following us. You're a bundle of cheer. You better snap out of it fast, smart boy. Yeah, sure. You know, day after tomorrow, Tass is gonna come out here with a ski plane, and we're off to Canada to spread it loose. You knock off the funny talk with nature, boy. Can't stop me from talking. Don't tempt me.
What's the matter? What's the matter? Marty! Look at his face! Marty, what happened? What happened? Oh, nothing. Go back to sleep. Why don't you turn in? I'll take the rest of your watch. Nobody takes my watch. I still got two hours left to go, and I don't want to be a burden on anybody. Finish your watch, and I'm going back to the sack. Anybody that wants to stand watch has got to be a cook. I'm going back to sleep before the next thrilling episode. Are you sure you're all right? I don't mind. I that. told you, I'll take the watch. tracks. I've never seen anything like it before. Must have passed through here during the night. You were on guard last night. What happened? Nothing you can handle. What kind of an answer is that? You were on guard all last night. Did you see something or didn't you? What I saw, you wouldn't believe. Look, I'm getting sick and tired of this. What did you see last night? Nothing. Maybe I can help you to remember. Oh, that would be nice. We could take turns sitting up with him and his friend. Come on, Alex, let's go. <laughs> I think I know why Byron eats like that. Why is that? He has to keep himself stuffed to prevent his brain from slipping down his throat into his stomach. <laughs> now let's pause for a brief look at the news. The biggest story to hit the Black Hills since the murder of Wild Bill Hickok was Sunday's sensational robbery at the Broken Boot Mine in Deadwood. What? Authorities believe the bandits could not have left the vicinity by the single daily train and therefore must be hiding out somewhere in the area. Police also believe that the simultaneous mine explosion in which watchman Leonard Wilsey lost his life was in some way connected with the robbery, perhaps as a diversion. In a moment, the weather. Can you beat that? It must have happened right after we left. Yes, or we'd have heard about it. The weatherman says snow and heavy overcast for Deadwood and Lead all day Tuesday with strong winds Wednesday, possibly clearing Thursday. And now, back to Gil. music in a mellow mood. Will the weather be the same here as it is in town? Just about. I hope it clears for the trip back. Better clear tomorrow. Why tomorrow? We're staying here, remember? 
It's Melanie and Salinas. I just wanted to let you know that I just got done watching Sven Gulli for the first time. He's pretty tacky, and he could use some makeup tips from Tangella. You guys are by far the best show on YouTube. I appreciate you. And be nice to Tangella. Hello, this is Livingston. Apparently, one of my newly acquired domestic duties is to request help for our show financially by asking you to visit our patron page. Your generosity will help keep Creature Features on the air, which I'm not entirely sure is a good thing. However, with only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new programming each week, which apparently some of you curiously enjoy. And should you have a desire to give even more, you might even receive a gift from Ms. Tangela. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com Um, Somebody famous, I bet. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. I am with Ross Lockhart of Word Horde Publishing. Do you put publishing underneath your... We just go by Word Horde. No. I mean, that's what a publisher is, right? Oh, a yeah. hoarder of words. There you go. And they and an, an encapsulator of words into these beautiful books. We're going to talk about this book in a moment. Oh, but first, so this film, The Beast from Haunted Cave. Uh, we're not seeing a whole lot of this beast. No. But we're seeing a lot of the women. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, yeah, that uh, barmaid actress was a, uh, a Playboy Playmate. She was a Playboy Playmate. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see naughty images? No, nah, this is mm -hmm. early right. Corman. All right. So. All right. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, you know, uh, uh, director Tom was mentioning this is filmed in Deadwood. Yeah, South Dakota. Deadwood, South Dakota. Yeah. Yeah, I always thought it was all desert and sand. There's obviously some snow there, right? Yeah, apparently so. Um, hmm. And I did read up a little bit on the movie, and uh, the director said that the first day of shooting, their camera equipment all froze up. And uh, Oh, that happens? Yeah, and right. Roger Corman uh, was on the phone from California and basically threatening to come out there and direct it himself uh, if they couldn't get the uh, cameras up and running. And so they... They fixed the problems and My goodness. shot the rest yeah, of the film. That's that's an issue. I mean, I imagine they could have maybe built a fire next to. Yeah, I'm not sure how they fixed it. Kind of or maybe they got some liquor in them that. or something. Well, they had to use film. Yeah. I, I cannot imagine trying to film a film with film. <laughs> I mean, it's it's so impractical. Yes. No, you have to send it away mm -hmm. before you even know how it came out. Yep. Imagine that. You, you, you take a shot of, and, and you catch this beast from Haunted Cave. And then you send the film off, and the film's no good. And it's like the beast from Modern Cave is gone. All the men with their sleds are gone. What are you going to do? <laughs> Anyways, I would make a terrible filmmaker, obviously. What have we got here? Eternal Frankenstein. My goodness. This art is incredible. It is, this art is more frightening than the film. <laughs> Films. But uh, this is another anthology, you said. Yes. Of Frankenstein-like stories or Frankenstein stories? Well, stories inspired by Frankenstein right. and inspired by Mary Shelley's life and work. This is gorgeous. I love the font you used in this. Oh, and I noticed you. the front of this, there's uh, an image here. Yeah. Which, what is A this? A plate taken from uh, one of the original publications of Frankenstein. The original Mary Shelley mm -hmm. publication. My goodness. Wow. That and, is gorgeous. And Frankenstein's always been a favorite uh, of mine so it was fun to do this anthology and what's your favorite frankenstein film 
Oh, it's the two James Whale films. Uh, I don't know them. Tell me. Oh, Jet Frankenstein and the Bride of Frankenstein. Oh, the originals. The originals from the 1930s, yeah. Oh, all right. All right. And, no, uh, I've seen those. Oh, yeah. No, there's been so many. There have been. Uh, and the, the one from the 70s. What was that one from the 70s? Oh, which one? The one where it was, uh, he looked more normal. Okay. Um, I think it was British. I know the one you're talking about, oh. yes. And they end up in the snow. Yes. That's the one that's got the crawling arm in it. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I saw that as a child and I, I nearly lost my you know what. I, I get that. Yeah, I remember no, that my, one. <laughs> my mother said, oh no, you cannot watch this. It's going to frighten you. I mean, it's not going to frighten me, mummy. And I had nightmares for a week afterwards. So that was a great movie. Um, though Jack Palance, no, he did, he did the vampire, Dracula. No, he, he doesn't care. Jack Palance was never Frankenstein, was he? I don't think but so. Bela Lugosi was. Yes. He yes. did not make a good Frankenstein. No. And if I remember correctly, he was Frankenstein's brain and Fritz's body by that point. That's, that's oh, one of the yeah. later Universal right, Frankensteins. Right. No. Well, you know, I think he was angry because he did not, he was not chosen to do Frankenstein and, you know, for obvious reasons. Yeah. But one good thing, he didn't have to talk as Frankenstein, right? That's true. Yeah, that accent of his. Can you imagine Frankenstein with that accent? Yeah, terrible. I can picture that. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you say we get back to this film? Sounds like fun. All right, off we go. Back to the Beast from Haunted Cave. A lot of skiing in this film, so if you're a ski fan, you're going to like this movie. See you soon. Keep your hands off, Miss Bullett. I'll treat my secretary any way I feel like it. You can keep your nose out of it. Unless you want a 38 caliber nose job. Gypsy? 
hikes with a big try, Galahad. Fortunately, I do that sort of thing all the time. Alex had a perfect right to slap me. Maybe I'll kill him someday, but I can't blame him for being sore. Why don't you get out? That's what I keep telling myself. But I know I'll never have the guts. I've become part of Alex. Maybe a sick part, but a permanent one. What are you really afraid of? I was an underpaid model in a wholesale house. And I met Alex. He was young and loaded. I liked the way he pushed me around. I liked it then. And now it's too late to go back. And I don't know if I really want to go back. I don't know what I want. But I know I'd rather have Alex than nothing at all. You're selling yourself short. Well, there's a law of supply and demand, mister. And I don't hear any bidders. Take it easy, huh? I'm sorry, baby. I'm not Florence Nightingale. Don't these backwood stations have any news during the night? Sure. Why are you so concerned with the news? It affects business. There's a threat of war. People stop buying fireworks. What's it to you? In a moment, the weather. Which leads them to believe they are still in the area. There are no further clues. On the weather picture, forecasters warn that the new low moving in from Canada will bring blizzards to portions of the Dakotas sometime before Wednesday noon. In other parts of the country... Blizzards. What's your worry? It might not come anywhere near here. Meanwhile, we can take it easy. Or are you in a hurry to get somewhere? What's that supposed to mean? Just a question. There you go. I'll fix that. Thanks, Chad. Huh? Hot milk and graham crackers. For me? You were very brave. Doing any better? Never better. It was a pretty dumb stunt you pulled. I pulled it on my own time. What time? You've got a 24-hour-a-day job. Yeah. Well, my business with that baby outside is strictly personal. It's the most personal thing that's ever happened to me. So far. Any more questions? Take him to bed. Chicago. Hold on. 
200 Y. You must have quite a turnover. Guests of the show stay at Hotel E on Courthouse Square in Santa Rosa. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Livingston said you wanted me for something. What do you want? You suck. Please die. Looking for Tasser? We'll try to make it with a storm coming up. Doesn't make any difference anyway. Let's take a walk. Work is a beautiful thing when somebody else is doing it. You should try it sometime. Hey, give me the axe. You'd probably chop your leg off. Oh, it's a leg one way or the other. Well, it wouldn't matter if it was just any old leg. I didn't think you'd notice. Kill, I'm beginning to understand how you feel about this place. It's comfortable and warm. At night, I like to listen to the wind trying to get in. It ever will? Not while I've got two hands to hold it back. Yo, they're going to kill you. You don't seem very surprised. No, I'm not. How do they figure to get out of here? There's a plane coming. It was due this morning. Probably delayed by the weather. Then we were going to go to Canada. We're going? I would like to stick around if you'd have me. I haven't really thought about it. Is that true? Well, maybe not completely. Well, I didn't know anything about that killing until I heard it over the radio. You don't know me, and I don't know you at all. You got it in your mind you want to return to nature, and I'm part of it. But what happens when you get bored? How do you know what I think? I don't know. I wish I did. I know one thing for sure. I'm sending Small Dove back to her relatives. And I'm heading back to blow the whistle on your friends. If you still want to come along, meet me between 6 and 6.30 on the ridge where we first saw the cabin.
Strong looking woman, that small dove. Big vulture. Too bad we have to kill her. Why knock her off? I kind of like that hefty old squaw. Fantastic comes, she goes. Along with Marty and the cowboy. Marty sure is flip. He's dangerous. Do you really think he saw something? <laughs> yeah, pink snowman. <laughs> hey, boss, I found it. Found what? The cougar's cave. More than 50 people paid their last respects to Leonard Wilsey, who was tragically killed in the mine explosion last Sunday. And that's the news up to 5 o'clock. Where's Davy Crockett? He went hunting. Hunting at night? Left about 4, hunting a deer. Venison? Sounds great. When was the last time we had venison, Alex? Oh, two years ago at the Key Club. At the Key Club? Mm -hmm. Chicago. You can only afford venison on your birthday, Alex. Out here, all it takes is a sense of nature and a strong hand on the trigger. We're running off at the mouth tonight. Why don't you drink and get fractured? It'd be normal. What did we do on my birthday that year, Alex? Your birthday? When is my birthday, Alex? can't remember. Well, that year we spent my birthday in Florida. Pulled a bankroll robbery at the Miami Fireworks Company. Oh, yeah, I remember. Killed two birds with one stone. Got 150 grand and put the Southern competition out of business. Many happy returns. They're acting mighty peculiar tonight. What are we going to do after this job, Alex? Oh, same things we always do. Why? I've got an idea. Why not retire? Retire? You're a rich man, Alex. Pick the bones of a thousand boobs who happen to have enough money to catch her eye. We don't have to take chances anymore. Why not quit? Strawberry Canyon Road is now closed and will be for at least another hour. Motorists are again warned not to drive unless absolutely necessary. I guess it is. expected to last through the night. And now a request for Mrs. Bertie Arnold in Deadwood from the Music Memory Album. Where are you going, Charles? For a walk, Charles. I just figured it out. It's Pa. What's Pa? Him against the wall. He's been driving me crazy. I get out of here. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Stay tuned.
This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Thing. Welcome back to the show. We are Creature Features and you are watching us and that's wonderful and we love you for doing that because, you know, some people do not watch our show. Why not? No. Well, they've got better things to do, I presume. <laughs> no, exactly. That's the face I make when I hear this news as well. Anyways, we are watching The Beast from Haunted Cave with Ross Lockhart of Word Horde who publishes wonderful books like this one, which we'll talk about in a moment. But uh, first, let's talk about this beast. On a cave. Yeah, it looks like Cousin It. Yeah. A lot of spider webs. Spider webs and you you thought there was paper mache I'm involved? I'm pretty sure it's paper mache. You know, paper mache monsters do not frighten me. And I'm easily frightened. I, I get that. I think they could have, you know, it's it's a it's a Roger Corman film. So what do you expect? You know, he, he did not spend a lot of money on his films. No. Nope. He's famous for that. Shot him in a few days. That's and, right. Uh, Paired him with another flick. And, and the story is somewhat rather ridiculous. Unlike this book, The Fisherman. Yes. This is not entirely about fishing, I presume. Well, there is a bit of fishing in it, but... Uh, it's not like a manual on how to catch... No. Smelt. <laughs> no. Right. Smelt is a fish, right? It, it, smelt is a I fish. I thought so. Right, um, right. No, it's, a, it's more of a meditation on loss and grief as a horror novel. And it's uh, about loss a couple of grief. widowers that... Uh, basically in trying to get through their grief, uh, take up fishing together. And they start to hear stories about what's up at the source of this river they've been fishing. Right. And so in the, the fashion of the American Weird Tale, they decide they're going to go investigate it. And it goes to some pretty strange places. And hilarity ensues. You could call it that. Right. And, but uh, John Langan is the author. Tell and, me about him. Oh, he's, he's an outstanding author. Um, this was his second novel. And... Uh, we picked it up in part because all the big publishers out there were saying, well, it's, it's too literary to be horror, and it's too horror to be literary. What are you going to do with it? And we said, oh, that's absolutely perfect for uh, what we want to do. And so we, uh, we licensed it, and we published it, and uh, it went on to win the Bram Stoker Award for Best Novel that year. My goodness. Now, you said he's not a local. He's up in uh, upstate New York. I love upstate New York. <laughs> You see some of the mansions in upstate New York. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, near the Thousand Islands. You know Thousand Islands is up in upstate New York. I bet you didn't know that. Yeah, Thousand yeah. Islands. I'm a few bars off. It's on the it. St. James River. No, but there's this one place, I forget what it's called, but it's got the most gorgeous mansion and they would not sell it to me. Hmm. That's why I ended up here. Ah. It was close. Oh, hey. I mean, you're near the ocean. It's... That's it. I got near the ocean. Up there, it would have been near a river. Yeah. But I wouldn't be close to Quebec, and I could have practiced my French. Yeah. All right, so this book is out and available on your website. On which our website. We and shall mention one more time, wordhoard.com. Yep. And people can go there, and they can... It's not like Amazon. It's not like they could read part of it, right? Well, if they want to go read part of it on Amazon and then come now, into the store, I will save them time. I will read a part of it right now. Okay. Yes, this is a good book. Buy it. See? It's better like than that. Amazon, and it's much. faster, too. All right, well, what do you say uh, we wrap up this film? Sounds good. And then uh, when we come back, we're going to find out what you're doing next and uh, what's uh, in store for the shop, right? Sounds like a plan. Okay, off we go to the Beast from Haunted Cave. We will see you on the back side of the credits. Don't go away during the credits. It'll make us sad. Tangela's coming back. Where's she going? To be away. I gotta follow her. No, you stay with me. Hey! Hey! Wait, this ain't no time for romance. Are you hungry? Look, sweetheart, I gotta follow her. The boss told me to.
Thank you for waiting. Thanks for coming. You really mean that? I usually mean what I say. How do you know I'm not just trying to save my own skin? It's easier for you to tell Alex and let him finish me. It would have been easier, but it would have been impossible. We better get started before the blizzard. It's a long way back. Snap out of it, Byron. Snap out of it. I see that you gentlemen have changed your ideas about my eyesight. Shut up. It got small now. Well, maybe it'll be satisfied with it. Not by a long shot. It knows who it's after. We've got to do something. We'll do nothing but stay put. It hasn't tried to get into the cabin yet. As a matter of fact, it ran from us. It didn't run from us. It ran from the fire that Byron threw at us. Well, it doesn't make any difference. What chased it away? We, we, we're out here on a job. We can't afford to have any nightmares. Okay, okay. I never saw such an animal. What is it? I saw pieces of an egg in the mine where it got Natalie. Now that could have been buried there for millions of years until the men working on the well, mine Robert, found it. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it chews up the whole state. I don't care if it came from Mars or happened by spontaneous combustion. We're going to Canada with a load of gold, so forget it. It'll get us. It'll get nothing. You got small dough. Probably get Gypsy too. Gypsy? Where is she? I saw her leaving on her skis. Cowboy didn't come back yet either. Gypsy and the cowboy. They deserve each other. Where do you think they went? Uh, probably went back to town. I'm going to get some soup. Should probably tell him about the robbery. I'll get the skis ready. We'd never catch him now. What are we gonna do? I'll probably run into that blizzard pretty soon. And they'll either have to hold up or turn back. There's a giant cave right near here. That's the only place they can hold up. How do you know about the cave? That's where I follow the cougar. All right. Let's try it. Can we beat the storm? Not a chance. Well, what do we do? We'll have to turn back. I knew it was too good to be true. I knew I'd never get away. Now, don't worry. We're not whipped yet. I know of a haunted cave not far from here. If you're not afraid of ghosts, we'll wait there till the storm blows over. Anytime your broomstick is ready. Hey, Byron, knock it off. Hey, meathead, I'm hungry. Can't hear you, boss. Why not? He left? Huh? Where would that imbecile go? Don't ask me, boss. Maybe he's chasing that Indian squaw. You know, Jackson told me that the uh, Black Hills are sacred Indian country. Heap bad medicine for evil men from foreign lands. <laughs> they must have heard we were coming. We don't eat Byron.
This brief moment of tranquility has been brought to you by Nightscape. Relax and sleep better every single night with this and other videos from our free YouTube channel. Learn more by visiting nightscape.co today. Go back. Go back. I come to help you. You can't help now. I gotta work fast. Is she still alive? Yes, but she has no mind. Cowboy to leave these things laying around. <laughs> what are they? Very pistols. What are they for? They used to fire flares. They can be seen from miles away. They're going to signal anybody. Well, we can use them to light the cave, can't we? Okay. Small dog. Got a chance. Marty's coming. He knows the monster's here. He's gonna get it. It's sucking her blood. Must be. 
here. How would they know? I made a very good guess. Stay here. Be careful, Gilly. Sad that the beast died. I don't blame her. You know, I remember this film now. The, yeah. with the, with the flares. What, who who kills monsters with flares? I mean, that's that's ludicrous. Yeah. You know, I bet you do not have one book that you've published where the monster was killed by a flare. Nope. No. Because it's be, ludicrous. That would be ludicrous. Right. Right. Anyways, welcome back to the show. Uh, we hope you liked the movie. I thought it was okay, except for the ending. 
she did not like the ending either, Princess Tangella. But she does like this book, so I think she's going to read this, and it might cheer her up. And uh, so what's going on next for Word Hoard? Now, it's called, uh, the rest of the store is called what? The, the Word Hoard Emporium of the Weird and Fantastic. Emporium of the Weird and Fantastic. So does that imply that there's more than just books? Yes. Uh, I mean, books are the heart of it, uh, right. and we carry a large selection of weird fiction, horror fiction, fantasy, science fiction, uh, and a lot of stuff from small presses that you're not going to find in most other right. bookstores. Right. But we've got uh, jewelry, stickers, oh, nail wonderful. polish, wonderful. all kinds of fun stuff, some oddities, and uh, pretty much anything that people that are fans of your show would uh, seek would enjoy. out. So, okay. fans of our show, if they're in Petaluma, California, how mm -hmm. did they find you? We're at 301 Second Street. We're open uh, Wednesdays through Sundays, about 11 to about 5. Wonderful. And that's like in a nice little warehouse district. Yeah, it's in the warehouse district, like so a there's a lot of funky down there. Nice, yeah. nice. How fun, how fun. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. We wish you the best success, and uh, next time you're in Bodega Bay, come see us again and tell us about a new book. Sounds like a plan. All right, and as far as you guys go, thank you so much for watching the show tonight. My apologies for those of you who have already seen this film, but uh, we won't show it again for another, what, four years? Four years. That's what we did last time. So uh, next week we'll have something new. Uh, I, who do we have next week? We've got Linda Day George next week. No, I think we've got her next week. I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, uh, we love you. See you next week. And uh, have a wonderful rest of your weekend. So, uh, Ross, you know yeah. this book on the fishermen you've done? I'm thinking there's this book I've wanted to write called The Mollusks. What do you think? No. <laughs>